as quilters it's so much fun to take liberty with our quilts and go free form and come up with some fun ideas to make it look different and sometimes we want to add some pops of color or other times we want to add a different kind of pattern or something that isn't quite traditional well this is that for me today i'm leah louise from inspired quilting by leah louise and i'm talking about wonky quilts now we started last with the last video with wonky corners and those were very simple we got through, through those and we made 10 blocks but now we're doing the other 10 blocks and we're doing wonky stars and i'm going to show you exactly how to do this step by step it's not difficult it's fun it's going to liven up your quilt and take a look behind me there's two star quilts back there the one is an all low volume star quilt and and it's beautiful and it's subtle and subdued but the one closest to me has some bright colors and it really stands out and those stars are asymmetrical with long points that really make a statement and they're lots of fun so come on and join me i want to show you how to make this quilt this is going to be fun oh and please don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up now let's get started i'm ready to quilt the first step in our wonky star blocks is to get the strips cut this is going to be made out of two and a half inch squares it'll finish at two inch and it's a 36 patch block which means we have six blocks by six at two inches so it's going to end up at 12 which is the same as the 12 inches for our 16 patch that we made with the three and a half inch blocks so we have 10 of these and now we need to make 10 of these and at this point you can decide whether you're going to do them all with wonky stars or just a few i'm going to go with three and i like to balance it in in odd numbers so you can place them throughout the quilt and it doesn't look particularly repetitious now if you're going to do half of them and do five you know that would work out well and alternate them but I'm going to go with three just for the sake of going with three and what I'm going to need in order to create these blocks so we have 10 blocks that are going to need 36 two and a half inch squares that's a total of 360 now doing all that individually is a lot of work so we're going to use strip sets and I want to show you how I've done this and the first thing I did with my fabrics is I grouped them together sort of by colors, mostly by the background. Now, I'm going to need approximately 52 strips that measure two and a half inches wide by the width of your fabric, by your 20 inches. And with that, I wanted to then subdivide them into groups and this is predominantly low volume fabrics that have a white background and sort of a neutral pattern it's not anything that stands out particularly bold and then this is mostly white as well but it's a bit creamier and it mostly has gray and the reason i'm separating these out is i want this all to be mixed together throughout the blocks and not have all the same pieces next to each other because remember when you do a strip set and let's say we're going to put six strips together those six strips are going to appear together every place they go and so i don't want them to be so repetitious that they stand out too much um, this one is sort of a creamy background with that reddish um, kind of a color in there it's sort of a a rusty red and these are some batiks with a lot of colors now I have whites predominantly but then I also have this sort of beigey almost a yellow background and these colors I think will work together and so as a group I'm good with that then these are a bit on the creamy to beige side and so I have these all grouped together in one and we start to get into our colors now these are going to be more sparse within the quilt so you can see i have one two three four five 
rows of these more neutral fabrics, but only three of the more colorful. And that's so there's not too much going on in the block. I want there to be interest, but I don't want so much interest that it's going to detract from our star. Because our star is, is what we want to be the primary focus of these blocks. And so we want these colors to highlight, but not necessarily dominate. And so here are some that I have. Again, they're they're not really strong and and bold. This one, you know, ordinarily I wouldn't have used that as a low volume, but what I like about it is even though the background is gray, there's so much white in there that it pulls off as a low volume easily and then you get the teal and the yellow. So I really like it. And, and that's a decision that you're going to be able to make as you shop for low volume fabrics is what do you like? What, what works for you? Do you like to have some busy prints in there? And even though this is quite a busy print, you'd be surprised when it's mixed in with others that it doesn't really stand out that much. Now, these are white whites with small color small bits of color that are in there. They're speckled, they have lines, you know, this is fish and jelly beans, this is a batik, and and so that's kind of fun. And then this is very similar. And let's see, where here we go? Right here. So we have white backgrounds. These are the more dominant colors. I think I've got them all here. There's just like four that are these real dominant colors. And when you think that maybe only three of these are going to be in each block, that's not a lot. That's going to spread it out quite a bit. And I may try and keep these more to the outside of, of the block, away from where the star is going to fall. So those are just some thoughts to have in mind as you're cutting your fabric. Now, when I cut these, what I did is, let me just move these up here so we have some room is I cut two and a half inch strips. And like I said, I need, I figure I need about um, 52 two and a half inch strips from the width of fabric. And I cut it from the longest length of my fat quarters. So it's two and a half inch by approximately 21 inches. And when I did that, I went ahead then, so I layered them. I just put them in a, a stack of however many you're comfortable cutting, and I cut one strip at 15 inches. Because at 15 inches, when I sew this into a strip set, I am going to have six blocks that measure two and a half inches. So two and a half inches times six is 15. So this 15 is what I'm going to use to create my strip set but I still have another five inches here. And what I did with that is cut two sets of two and a half inch squares. So think about this now, we're going to have seven blocks that are just straight 36 patch. They're going to be all two and a half inch squares like this. We're going to have three blocks that are going to also be 36 patch, but there's going to be stars in there. And we can't piece those with strip sets, not completely. So I want to have plenty of singles available that I can use for my three star blocks. So that's why I have all these, these little bits and pieces laying here. So for now, I am going to remove these and I'm going to put them in a sort of neat pile over here, just sort of group them all together. And I'm going to set that aside for when I'm ready to do my star blocks. Because the first thing I'm going to do is make the seven blocks that are going to be all just straight strip sets. Now what that means is I am going to sew, there we go, six strips together. Oh, there's a few more here. Boy, these are everywhere. Now, one thing I do want to mention is I do not have 52 different fabrics. These, for example, were the full width of fabric. So I have double strips. There's a lot of these that I have double strips on. And I made sure 
it was more the neutral fabrics than the bold in color because these are not the blocks that I necessarily want to have a lot of color in. So that's the first consideration. The other thing is that these blocks are not going to have wonky corners within the block itself. We can put them on the outer edges, but in order to strip set these, it would take quite a bit of fussy work to put corners within the block, which is why I held the dominantly bold print fabrics for the 36 patch, because this is going to bring color into the block. It may not be the corners, but there's going to be color. And I'm going to show you an image here of the original quilt that I made. So let's take a look at this. And you'll see here that this quilt has three stars, but notice around those stars, this is actually a close-up with uh, just the two stars, but notice the blocks that the stars are within do not have any wonky corners in there. Surrounding them, there are wonky corners, and that works fine. We don't see within that star block that we're missing any color. So back to these, what I want you to see is that we are going to make seven 36 patch quilts with all these fabrics. And then any pieces that are left over, plus the singles that we have, we'll use on our star, on our star blocks. So we're going to have six different fabrics for each each of our strips and we want to mix it up so a lot of times what I'll do well the first thing I'll do is I don't want white white cream cream this that and color color I'm going to mix this up so um, I have this one I'll put this here and I'll do say this one now let's do a one of these color ones this one and then we'll do a beigey one and this color and let's see let's put this here and this one okay so now one two three four five six seven eight and that works out fine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take just get six strips and I'm going to take one from each pile so that as I'm working through, there we go, I'm going to have my strips ready to go. So here's my first set. Okay, now if I start with this block, I'm going to end up with the same series of colors. Or I can start here or here and count and rotate around. But another thing, because I know I have a lot of these, I'm going to use this, but go with every other one. So my last one, what did it start with? Okay, it started with a purple dot. So I just want to make sure I'm not starting with the same fabrics. And these, these are cycled through. So I'll do this one, then I'll do this one. So see, I'm going to go every other one which will mix them up a bit. One, two, three, four, and come back and start with, say, the ones you missed. Five and six. Okay, so now here's a second set. So I'm going to go ahead and do six of these. And so I'll have six strip sets. Then I'm going to show you how we'll cut them and piece them back together. Um, actually, that's going to be six, and we need seven. So I'm going to go ahead and do that seventh one, because I might as, might as well do it while I'm doing six. The seventh one will be easy. So let's go ahead, and I'll show you how that works, and we'll go from there. But in the meantime, start looking at your low-volume fabrics and see what you can pull together. And remember, these may not ordinarily be considered low-volume fabrics, because there's a lot going on in here. But because they have that white background and the white is dominant, that's going to work as low volume. And that's the same, look at these little blocks are everywhere. That's the same with this. This is sort of a, a creamy to white background, but that's what's dominant. The, the colors on top are, are more sparse. So as long as that background really stands out, 
then that's where your dominant color is going to be. So let's go ahead and get this grouped and I'm going to show you how to make our 36 patch for seven blocks. Okay, let's go. I have seven strip sets, each containing six strips. And what I did is sewed them all together and then I pressed them. And what I did is I chose on each of my strip sets the darker end of it. Um, it really isn't critical, but the way I'm looking at it is as I piece these together, I'm going to want to turn these around so I'll have dark and light. I'm probably not going to put two darks together. So if I press all my seams to the darkest edge, then when I'm flipping my, my, uh, <laughs> I can't even talk, when I'm flipping these strip sets, then I'm going to have nesting seams. And that's really important to me because it makes such a difference in getting good clean squares. So sew the six strips together, press them all to either the darker or the light side. It doesn't matter which as long as you're consistent. And then you come in and you cut your two and a half inch strip. So like I said, this is a 15 inch piece of fabric and we cut it into two and a half inch strips and we'll get six pieces. Now, again, what we're going to do is not like, unlike what we did initially, is we're going to take our strips and divide them up into the groups of the same, because now we're going to begin mixing and matching in order to create our, our block. So actually, you know what I'm gonna do is we'll kind of do this here. I'm going to just make one right on here now that's the darker one and these are the lighter ones so that's pressed down and this one is pressed up so those neat seams nest and i'll leave that one here and i'll take these out let's see let's get down here a bit Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Oh my goodness. I knew something wasn't working. Okay, I'm taking off an entire row. That's what I'm doing. Get myself all confused. Okay, I don't want to have a red one right next to a red one. And because these are two colors and these are two that are sort of not so much, I do want to flip them around, except that if I do... The seam's not going to, oh yeah, no it won't. So I'm going to pull this one out and put it over here. And let's see, that's up and this comes down. Here, I'm going to take this one. There we go. Because I, I kind of want alternating, only in that I don't want a lot of beigey colors or whites all together in one spot. So I'm going to take these two out. Let's see. Actually, that would look pretty nice right there, wouldn't it? But I'm going to try and resist having the same um, pattern, the same print in the block. So if I go with this, that works out really well. This is down. I want this to go this way and that works out pretty good but you know what i don't like about this is these two are very similar prints and those are very similar colors so i don't want to go with this one but i do like the idea of a green in there and that works out really well and let's see do we have any other conflicts here so see this could be one of my one of my 36 patches so I would take this and sew each of these six together, and then I'm going to have a block that is six, let's go, six by six, and then there we go. That's going to be finished. Now, if you want to add some wonky corners, this is when you would do it. You can come in and add some in between where these are going to join. That's optional, but like I said, I think there's enough color in here that I'm not going to worry about the corners. 
If anything, I might put some on these outer corners, but I'm going to wait until I put the quilt together and place my my uh, blocks and see what I want, um, you know, where it's needed. If there's already colors here, I don't need to add one on this. So we're just going to kind of wing that as we go. There's a lot happening here, and this looks good. It's nice and balanced. Now, these are the two same fabrics, but there's, you know, pale enough here that you don't really notice that. And I don't know, I don't see anything else. Okay, these are kind of similar, but they're on the opposite. So that's kind of what I look for, is that I don't have anything really close to each other that is going to detract from the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll make this block. I'll get some more made up and show you how this goes together. We're coming along now. And now we're at the final step. We have 10 of our 16 patches made. We have seven of our 36 patches made, and they were created just like this, 36 blocks sewn together. And now we're going to make the three stars. And we start with the same um, layout as we did on the 36 patch. So I lay my blocks out the way I want them. This is going to be my center. I'm doing three stars, and each of them have the same center, just for continuity. Um, you can do whatever you want, obviously. And what I'm doing is creating the center and then I'm going to put the triangles or the arms of the star in next. So once I get this part done, the first thing I do is I sew these outer corners. This just sort of kind of keeps things tidy. So this is a nine patch and this is a four patch and these I guess for lack of better, is a six patch. Um, and so I sewed these together. Then what I also did is I sewed these strips together and I put down the triangles that I want for the legs. I did the same thing here. Now because this is sewn only on a single square, I went ahead and I did my triangle. Oops, I forgot to cut that piece of fabric off and then sewed this seam here. So what I'm ready to do now is sew everything together so I have three strips and then they're going to be pieced together. What I do want to show you, what I found works rather easily, is I, I have a lot of my, my cut triangles. Um, for the small ones I use little squares as well as my leftover wonky corners. So just, you know, whatever works for you. And I just chose to use the same colors as the wonky corners in the quilt, um, just because I thought it would all tie together better that way. So when I've got my my uh, legs of the stars, I don't know, what are they called? Are they arms? Are they legs? Or protrusions? I just don't know. But anyways, whatever they are, we lay them in and I find it easier to do a quarter inch um, to, what do I want to say, to press a quarter inch seam allowance. That way I can lay these where I want them and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and sew this. Now what I do is, because it's already pressed, I'll just sort of hold this down, then I'll come in with my fingernails, you know, the tips of my fingers, and then just hold that in place and then sew it. And then when I, I flip it over, I'm in good shape. Of course, you want to make sure that you cover all that up there. Um, and you know, there's, there's some different options. Keep in mind that you do have a quarter inch seam. And if you sew your triangle, you know, right off the edge, you're going to lose a bit of that point. And that's okay. Um, just know that you're going to have that seam allowance. And so I actually had a couple triangles that were, or some rectangles that were shorter, and I cut them too. And so what I'll do is I have this fold right there. You see how that fold is pressed in? And then I'm going to iron this in, or excuse me, um, sew it in and then iron it over. And if I sew it with just a little bit of a seam allowance there, that's going to make that point become a bit longer. So those are some tips at this point for sewing it together. I do want to show you the first finished one. 
I think it came out really sweet. And I love mixing all the different colors in here. Now, the other thing, if you look at this, you'll notice that in the center, I used pretty low volume. I mean, very low volume without color because I don't want these blocks to conflict with the colors of the star. But I did put colors around the outer edge. Like I said, I'm not going to use the wonky squares, or excuse me, the wonky corners on this. I may choose to put some in the corners, but rather than um, do that here, because piecing this together and then adding some corners is a bit, a bit much. I figured we didn't need to go to all that. Um, to do this. We can do it instead with placement of color. And so this has a lot of color around the edges. It's going to bring out some nice color from our star and it's going to work well with the uh, patches, the uh, 16 patch that goes around it. So here we are. I have three stars. This one's finished, almost ready and near to be ready. And once these are all taken care of, I will go ahead and get the quilt put together and show you what it looks like. I'm really excited. It is so pretty. And it's a finish. Loose threads and all, which I'll get those later. But I do want to show you how pretty this looks. The corners, the wonky corners, just spread out sporadically adds really a lot of beautiful color. And, and just enough to keep it interesting. But what's I want to show you with this particular quilt is that low volume can be a lot more than just, you know, beige and cream backgrounds. You can do so much more with it and you just need to be able to, you know, get in there and, and decide what it is for you. Remember, you're, you're the quilter. This is your quilt that you're making and you set the rules. Don't worry about what anybody else says or anything like that. You just, you go with it and you find what you like. And I just love these little, little stars. Oh my goodness, little threads everywhere. And I just think they're so cute. And I, I really like the two longs and the two shorts. That's just sort of my thing. But you can do it any way you want. You can make them all short. You can make them all long. You can overlap them. You can bring them where they just touch each other. So, you know, it's, they're wonky and that, that's like, you know, free reign to do whatever you want. But I just want you to see how pretty these colors are and how well they work together. And even though there are some bold colors within the low volume background, it works really well. And I love how the larger blocks work next to the smaller blocks. They're, are the four corners that we have to meet up with um, the 12 inch blocks and then they all meet in the center. Now one thing I thought about is I'd really like to do a pattern for this. So I'm glad I did this because one thing that I think I realized is this would be fun to do in a five patch instead of a six. By doing a five patch you won't even have these center seams to match up. So that's one more, more time-saving uh, step that we can take. Just so you know, we've got a thunderstorm going in the background. It's getting darker by the moment, and I'm hearing the thunder rumbling. So I just want to let you know, it's, uh, it's not me grumbling. I, I may be hungry. I need to get my lunch, but that's all right. That's not me making all that racket. So here we go. Let's look at this. Oh, that's so pretty. And I like how the center square, can we see those together, you know, are are the same print. I just think that's fun. And because it's a multicolor, it works great with all these different um, colors around the star. And these colors are the same as the wonky corners. And I just, I love how it all turned out. I am really, really happy with this. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to perhaps give it a try yourself, you know, and just try some wonky stars. Now, I only put three in here, but you could do an entire quilt with it, and it would be beautiful. And you can have them going any which way that you want. And just look at these. Oh, my goodness. They're just, they're fabulous. 
So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for letting me share this with you. I hope you have some wonderful ideas for a new quilt that you might want to try. And please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. It's been a pleasure to see you here today. I am going to top this off with a photo. Let me add a photo of this at the end of the whole layout. I almost forgot about that. All right. That's all for now. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And here it is. Here's the finished quilt, and it measures 48 by 60 inches, and I think it looks wonderful. Thanks for following along. Have a wonderful day.